Hello folks and welcome to Saving Miller. Today let's talk a little turkey. So this year we decided to do a thing and get some turkeys. And this was a little crazy. We got 17 of these things. So right now, the end of August, they are four months old. So this is a really interesting look at some juvenile turkeys. There you can see they're starting to strut. Check that out. So people see these. The cows are going to run them off. <laughs> People see these and they think they're so cool. And they really are. Like their plumage is cool, the way they're strutting. Their sounds, you know, their sounds are really interesting. They kind of have a little trill. They've got the yelp. They've got the gobble. They're, they're very talkative birds. Much more than... Much more than chickens. So these guys are just... I would, I would term them juveniles. Now, there's just a lot of things to consider with turkeys, you know, how, how do they behave, how are they going to fit in with your, uh, with your other animals, with your homestead, the space that you have available. Is it a good idea? Well, I have to say, so far, we've not regretted this. Um, these are big birds. They're basically bandits of the of the uh, the barnyard they will just especially once they grow up a little bit like this they're gonna go where they want they're gonna do what they please so I made a video you may remember of the roost that I built for them it's a little hard to see it's kind of a little far away now but you see all the white chickens out there so those white chickens were chicks with the turkeys and they were all um, Part of a flock they all stuck together and I, I built that bar there for the turkeys to roost on and they did for about a month and then they decided they no longer respect any fences or anything and decided that instead they're just gonna roam around wherever they like and honestly there are benefits to having them free-ranging they're going to you know keep up with a lot more of the bugs especially live insects, they're going to have a, more of an ability to work on populations of mosquitoes and uh, flies and things like that. We have some kind of June beetle that's around right now. So they come out morning and evening and they cover a very large area. They literally roam the entire front half of the pasture here. They don't go to the back, which is good. But they're just, they're roaming around, they're eating. Um really foraging quite well and they all seem to be about the same in terms of foraging their ability to to get out there they are hoping that i will give them worms in terms of uh these are mealworms we actually give them mealworms every evening and it has kept them fairly tame, and they'll come up to us, like, wherever we are. They literally come right up to us like this. So that's pretty cool. Um, they're, like, I was concerned they might be mean, but, because they, they've got quite a beak on there. I mean, that's, that's, you see that beak? That's big. And those are serious legs. They, they could really, they could really hurt a person. Their wings are big. These are very young birds, but they can be... Quite powerful uh, you know a 25 pound Tom can, can do a lot of damage and so I was concerned that they might be mean or they might chase us around or try to or hurt the kids they've actually been very very gentle so far we've got quite a number of Toms my best count is let's see I think there are three bourbon reds and then two others so I think we have five but there might be six. I think there's five. The cows are curious about them. They're kind of pushing them out. So here you can kind of see how they might interact with, you know, a cow. The cow is curious. 
These birds are in my pasture. What are they doing? Can I chase them? <laughs> hey, easy boy. Easy boy. Easy. So they, you know, they're these are these are young steers, so they're just curious. They want to play. This guy actually has seen the turkeys from a very young age, and so they're not new to him. But they the cows do tend to kind of keep them out of the pasture for some reason. Now, let's look at the, uh, other than knocking the fence down, as you can see, they're just walking right across it like they don't care. So let's look, talk a couple of the negatives. So first of all, they're not going to roost where you want them to necessarily. So they've determined that the top of the chicken coop... It's really hard to make a video with these roosters. They've decided that the top of the chicken coop is the best place to roost. And so, this is kind of a warning. They've done this in a matter of a week, I think. Their, their poop is really big. I mean really big. And <laughs> it just makes a mess. Even when it's dry. I mean, they've made that mess. And so, it's quite annoying that they won't roost on the roost that I built for them. They'll roost on here. So do I now improve this and have them go somewhere else? It's probably a good thing, but they, they won't roost in there. They won't roost on the hay that I just got. So we've been trying to keep the turkeys separate from the chickens and ducks here, but they, we had this uh, poultry netting set up all the way around here. And the turkeys literally came and pushed it over. They just jump up on it and push it down. So... It really was very annoying. They push the whole thing down. They just run over it wherever they want to. And this is kind of surprising, like it's not electrified, so it doesn't shock them. But they definitely kind of came and took over. Um, they decided, they're the boss of the, of the area. They will chase the chickens off. They will run them away from feed. They would just dominate them. The, they don't bother the ducks too much, which is interesting. But they definitely will uh, run the chickens off. Here's the full flock, I believe. So we should have nine bourbon reds, four of the blue slate, and four of the royal palm. The royal palm are these white ones, and the blue slate, of course, are these sort of blue-colored turkeys. So there you hear it. A juvenile gobble. We named this one Big Blue. This guy right here. He's a really nice turkey. He's the biggest of all of them. And he's just started sort of response gobbling. I think one of the bourbon reds is as well. Uh, when a rooster crows or something like that, he'll gobble. Okay, they're making a bunch of racket. I've got to get, a, get the worms out for them. Turkeys need a lot of protein, especially young turkeys. And mealworms are quite a good source of protein. So we've fed them these um, from a very young age, mostly to keep them somewhat tame. And uh, I don't know, this must be like ice cream. All the birds like mealworms and we give it to all of them, but the turkeys will typically run off the other birds. Ducks are hanging in there though. So like I said, they, they can be fairly demanding. They were essentially demanding that I give them worms. That was what they were saying. They were crowding around us and uh, definitely mobbing us saying, hey, we want more. This hen has decided that, uh, that we're friends. So she, she's pretty brave here. She'll hop right up here. She'll try to take the worms before everyone else. So, over the next couple of months, these birds are going to get even bigger. You know, if you watch the uh, our, our video about Thanksgiving, the 
first turkey that we had, you can see, you know, from this from this age, he got quite a bit bigger. And he he was too big to control. Um, he couldn't actually fly very well anymore. It seemed like he almost got too heavy to fly uh, like where he wanted to. So he, he, he stopped roosting on top of the coop, I think, because he was too heavy. So I'll give you a shot here of the turkeys when they're roosting. It's going to be fairly dark by the time they're up there, but I'll show it to you. Okay, so the sun is going down. It's getting dark. And the turkeys have finally roosted. I'm not going to get too close because they're going to come to me. But you can see they're kind of sitting on top of these coops. So if you have anything that's elevated, they're probably going to roost on it. So they're just kind of hanging out there, and you can kind of see why they make such a mess with their manure. Um, it also means it's not on the ground where we would like it to be. So that is how these four-month-old birds are roosting right now. When they were young, they did roost inside the chicken coop. Um, even now, there may be a turkey inside the chicken coop. But they really like to go to a high point, and it seems like they don't really like to have anything over their heads. So our conclusion is these birds are so awesome. We've not eaten any of them. We will this fall. Um, very excited about that. You know, as you can see, they're free range. We feed them very good feed. And they're pretty gentle. They're, they're, they really are nice. They're kind of like a large chicken, but definitely more demanding, uh, but possibly not as aggressive. I mean, these white roosters that we have and the cream leg bar roosters that we had before that were actually quite aggressive. Um, they'll attack the kids. They'll attack us until they kind of learn, you know, that we're not going to be intimidated. But the turkeys have not attacked us, but they definitely will attack other birds. Like maybe you can see the, they're running the ducks off because they think the ducks have some food there. <laughs> but as far as people, they're very, very friendly. And uh, we're going to keep some of them. We're probably going to keep, um, we're going to keep Big Blue. Where did he go? Can't see him right now. Here he is. There's Big Blue. Big blue slate. We're gonna keep him for sure, and uh, a couple of his hens. And we may keep the the royal palms, uh, but we probably will not keep any of the bourbon reds. The royal palms and the blue slate grew faster. They got bigger, at least so far, than the uh, than the bourbon reds. And the bourbon reds seem to fight more. They seem to be. Um, more friendly, but they definitely fight a little bit more with each other. The burb the blue slate, he's walking over there, and the white ones, the royal palms, actually have been very gentle. They have not been aggressive towards the other turkeys at all. So that was kind of impressive. That's one thing that we learned. So hopefully this will be helpful to you if you're thinking about getting turkeys. You know, I'd say for uh, for this uh, we have two and a quarter acres of grass here the birds basically only occupy about uh, half of that and i think this is enough i think any more than this and they would just be so out of control that they would be causing more problems and so i don't think we ever want to have more than about 15 or so i think that's enough we'll see how they mature into adults but definitely for raising them as a uh, uh for a harvest bird in the fall i think uh I think it's a good choice. I definitely recommend giving it give it a try. We've been very entertained by them. Um, they're very interesting birds, like I said, and they they seem to be very helpful for the farm too in terms of uh, bug control. As they've gotten bigger, they've gotten much more aggressive at finding, at foraging, and finding food out there. They seem to be very good at that. Um, they do eat a lot of feed, a lot of feed. Even with the free range, they, they eat a lot. And so that's definitely something to keep in mind. The cost is, is fairly steep. And I 
I hope I can get kind of a rough estimate of what they cost, but definitely think about that. They're going to cost you a lot of feed. So there's our story so far of raising these turkeys as a, as a meat bird for this fall. Good luck with yours and saving Miller out.